The Big Story. Okay, girls, last stop. Oh, come on. We only live two blocks away. Drive the bus down. What do you care? Nobody's watching. Come on, come on. It's after two. I'm on this run since 4 p.m. Even the bus is tired. Oh, come on, driver. Give us a break. What a nice girl. Come on out. I'm due back at the terminal in 15 minutes. Come on, Charlene. As soon as I get my purse. Hey, what are you trying... We asked you to go. But no, you have to get stuck in. Need to get his change. What are you going to do? Well, I sure ain't going to leave him here to blab his big mouth off. <laughs> New York City, New York. The story of a city editor who uncovered one of the most vicious crime syndicates in history and knew he'd only touched the surface. New York City. The story as it actually happened. Paul Schoenstein's story as he lived it. The story of the two bobby soxers who had shot, killed, and robbed the bus driver on East Fremont Avenue. That was one of several in the series that got you going, Paul Schoenstein, city editor of the Journal American. That and the story of the Wolf Girl Pack, none over 20, who snatched purses, tore clothes, and killed when forced into corner. That and the woman who ran an uptown night spot and who gasped with her last breath, bunch. They say they're going to give you a break if you pay them, and so you pay them, and then they do this to you. Two hoods take you apart with a knife. That determined you, Paul Schoenstein, to get to the cause of these horrors. You called Jim Huran and Leon Rock into your office, both of them reporters. Both men like you, who are after the fact. Rock, a big, raw-boned man who has been assigned to the Bobby Soxer story. They picked up the two kids. They were hiding out in the most obvious hideout in the world, a friend's place. And? Well, come on, Leon, come on. I want to know what's going on here. It ain't pretty. The juvenile authorities will take care of the two girls, all right? The real point is why they did it. These are just two of 10,000 kids running around the city with crazy ideas in their head. All right, why? Some dame, a woman named Marie... Something fantastic, mysterious, exotic, who knows what else. She's behind them some way. All right, Leon, that's your assignment. Get Marie. You got a week. Come back with the answers. Leon Rock smiles the smile that you know is calling you a name for being such a tough nut. But a smile at the same time that suggests if the stuff is gettable, he'll get it. And you turn to Huran, who has by now pounded out a lead editorial. Well, let me hear it, Jim. It's a little rough. All right, so it's rough. Okay. Rampant white slavery with virtual children as the vice slaves, drug dens, sale of marijuana, heroin, and cocaine. That's a good idea, Jim, but it won't work. What's the matter, Paul? It just sounds sensational. Big talk. I want the facts. Every single detail of this thing found out, nailed down, printed. There could be a lot of trouble. Then I want names named, the responsibility placed where it belongs. I can make it pretty hot. Get pretty high up. That's exactly the idea. Exactly. <laughs> So begins an investigation into crime in the greatest city in the world. It begins in a bar uptown about a minute before 4 o'clock in the morning, just before legal closing time. And you're there, Paul Schoenstein, with Jim Huran, playing a role as an out-of-towner. What do you have? Uh, give me a double. It's 4 o'clock, brothers. Now, maybe your watch is fast. Come on, give us two doubles. Oh, no, my watch keeps very good time. Why don't you kind of, I don't know, walk around the corner, stop at 137? That's a place they never heard of clocks. One thirty-seven is just a room with just a man and just a table, just a bottle and two glasses, and no clock. Uh, give us a double. Okay. <coughs> hey, what are they putting in these bottles? And you around here? 
Who are you? That ain't a question folks ask. They call me Potty Boy. Oh, well, that's nice. I seen you two walking around. Seen you wondering. Finally seen you come in. Seen you waste your money. <laughs> you mean on the shellac? No, the stuff's good. Good as any after-hour place. Now, what I mean is mostly an out-of-towner would order himself a double. Fellow knew the rope. Would order himself a shorty. A shorty and a question. What's a shorty? You get yourself a triple drink and pay the price of a double. Oh? What's the question? That's something you ask and I answer. But you got to be interested. What'll you have? I'll take a shorty. And I'll ask a question. Party boy leads the way. And you start up a miserable street, stop at a miserable staircase, and enter a house through a miserable hall. The shades are drawn, and the doors are closed, and the muffled music can't be heard from the street. But inside... Inside, it's hot and moist and fetid. A dozen dancing couples. Take a look around. Anything you see? Looks like it might be lucky. You just nod at it. Lucky? You just asked a question, didn't you? You might need a little luck for the answer. The luck of Bobby Soxer. Kids like the two who killed the bus driver. Some lazily dancing. Others just standing, waiting. To go through with the role you're playing, you, Paul Schoenstein, nod at a smoky-eyed redhead, and Jim Huran indicates a tousled blonde, maybe 18. Let's go on inside to the questioning place. They'll be around. <laughs> Put five to get five. Not just a roving dice game, not just a corner of a wall with a tough guy cutting 10% of the house, but a layout as elaborate and swank as anything in the famed sporting clubs all over the country. And then... Ooh. <laughs> Play the dice, mister. Play the dice. That's what I love. <laughs> the dice. This here's Dora. My name is Alona. A thousand <laughs> blonde and a smoky-eyed redhead. They're there. Standing there next to you. Oh, Daddy, buy me a drink and let's play the dice. Here, this is the profession. Little kids that ought to be at home in bed, half crocked on the cut gym, eyes promising everything in the world and telling you in their childish voices. I tell you, Daddy, I'm the luckiest thing in the world on dice. Here, to work on a commission basis. didn't cost you too much, Jen. I mean, for that much fun. Well, no, party boy. No, it was fine. Fine. Well, you know where to go in the future, anyhow. Introductions are always a little bit expensive. Yeah, well, how, uh, how do you get these girls? I just told you. You point at them. No, no, no. I mean, uh, where do they come from? Oh, I wouldn't know that. That ain't my concern. You especially interested in girls? <laughs> Who ain't? Ain't that the truth? In that case, you ought to tie up with Marie. Marie again. Marie, one of the places you started from, and now one of the places you come back to. One of the big names, together with Big Joe Catterton for protection. Together with Lennox Avenue Tom, hotels with rooms for rent. One of the big names you're after. Leon Rock has a special look on his face. It's four days since he went out for Marie. All we've really got is she's had 27 different hideouts in the last year. Well, where is she now, Leon? No information at all. She works through the high schools, recruits a kid from some class, and that kid's the colonizer for her. Brings the girl after class to one of Marie's hideouts, and that's where it begins. And you got no immediate lead? Well, just that she's supposed to be moving into Phillips High School. The high school lies flat in the middle of an area where 10% of the houses have outside sanitation. And where two and three families live in the space where one should live. And the teachers... Perhaps the most harassed human beings on earth. Cooperate? Sure, I'll cooperate, Mr. Schoenstein. I've talked to police, civic leagues, the form organizations, the district attorney's office. I'll be glad to talk to you or anyone else. Well, no, just a second, Miss Hanson. I, uh, I know there have been a lot of tries and a lot of flops. The way to go about this thing, well, at least we think so, is one thing at a time. We want Marie. I think if I ever saw that woman, if I ever came face to face with her, I'd kill her. The things I've seen her do to the poor girls in my class. 
Like what? Oh, I don't have words to say it. Every foul thing you can imagine. Where is she operating from now, this Marie? Well, I got hold of two girls' diaries. They brought them to school to show off to each other what they were doing. I got one of the girls. She had little sense left. And she told me there was a place on East 114th Street. But that's the last address I ever heard of. Well, thanks, Miss Hanson. Thank you very much. It's not very hard because the diary entry is very recent. And the house is there and the apartment. And you and Leon Rock are at the door. Can I help you? Well, uh, we'd like to talk to you, Marie. Oh? Have we met? No. You're a well-known woman, that's all. I'm beginning not to like what I hear. Well, what do you think you hear? Look, you two, stand where you are. You're not coming in here. Oh, but we are, Marie. I'll get on that phone. There'll be somebody here Yeah, so you fast. do that. Do that, will you? In the meantime, we'll kind of look around. Say, uh, tell me, Marie, is this the place where you make high school girls into steerers? There are nine rooms. Amid the squalor of the rest of the neighborhood, Marie's place is a palace. Indirect lighting. Oriental rugs on the floor. And the bathroom done in onyx and gold paint. A real little paradise conjured up out of the brain of one Marie. Joe says to tell you to be sure to stick around. Oh? Big Joe? Joe Caddison. Uh-huh. You know, I like the way you do it, Marie. Do you? You get them out of those stinking holes they live in ordinarily with the outside plumbing. You give them a social club, music, a room of their own, a little of the feel of the good life. Joe also says it don't matter whether you stay or not. You won't get far. Yeah, that's your idea. Get them used to the good life. Maybe give them $10, 15 in their pocket, too. Give them a taste of good liquor and then show them how easy it is to keep going. Talk. Talk your head off. Then all they got to do is show up in one of Party Boy's places or somewhere else. Nice roving gambling joint where they bring you luck at dice, huh? Or 21 or chuck-a-luck or whatever. <laughs> For 10% of the house's take. What are you? One of them reformers. And, and that's only the beginning. First the steer and then anything goes. Yeah, it's very nice, Marie. It's real democratic. Any girl can rise to the top of the heap. Well, do you think you can change human nature? This kind of setup will always be around, mister. You won't. And she's got something there. A terribly profound truth. It's not only poverty sending them into situations like this. It's what Marie calls human nature. Well, you're getting somewhere. You and Jim Huran and Leon Rock. Something besides editorial anger. The fact. And as you walk back to your hotel, which you set up as headquarters, because home isn't the safest place on earth, there's a note waiting for you. I'd stop now while I can. After all, you can't change human nature. Sign Joe. Big Joe Caddison, talking philosophy. And with a subtle threat in your hand, you know you're getting somewhere. You'll start again tomorrow to go beneath the surface, beneath the incredible horror of the surface that you've only touched. This is Cy Harris, returning it to your narrator and the big story of Paul Schoenstein, as he lived it and wrote it. You're after the story of Vice in the city you make your home, Paul Schoenstein. Vice in New York City. And it's big and infinite. And sprawling is the city itself. Because you've touched on part one, liquor, and part two, gambling, and part three, girls, part four, threats, was no surprise. And so you sit now with Jim Huran and Leon Rock, reporters who have gone all the way with you, and plan the answer to the threat. Okay, first we run the editorial, then we start the series, Jim. I knew you'd figure out something like that. There's no figuring involved. It's the only thing you can do. We'll try editorials. And while they're running, we'll work up the rest of it. I picked the right guys for the job. The rest is right. Joe Caddison, Lennox Avenue, Tom, we've got all the leads. <laughs> Parts one and two and three and four have been comparatively easy. What you want now are the men behind the dice games, the steerers, the Marie's, the party boys. The men who put in the fix. You, uh, you the guy I gotta see? Depends. 
Well, I want to open a club. I, I want a nice place with good appointments. Nothing low down. It still depends. Well, Marie said you were the guy I should see because she's working with me. I never heard of Marie. But if you want a place, I'll draw you up a lease. All I know about mister is I own the place. <laughs> You go through a lot of motions now. One of the boys on the paper comes in to decorate the place. You send one of your nightmen to talk terms with the landlord about the bar that's going to run the whole length of the place. You make arrangements with beer companies, a strictly legitimate operation, it seems. And in time, the man you've been waiting for shows up. You're a little surprised at who it is. It's going to be a nice place. What? Well, party boy. Well, what brings you to this neck of the world? Bar in the back. Tables out here. Little space for dancing. I hear you rented the rooms upstairs, too. Hey, you get around, don't you? You know, first some of the boys were worried. But I got a message for you. Big Joe says it'll be $100 a week to start. Protection, huh? Joe said he didn't like the way you talked with Marie. But that was on an account he didn't know what you were after. He says 100 to start. Well, I'll be glad to meet with Joe. Joe says fine. He says tonight... About a little before 11 at my place. You tell Joe I said fine, huh? You you in on this, Tom? It's my place you're moving into. Didn't you know? And this here is Buster. Oh, well, where's Joe? Buster's Joe. He's as good as Joe, anyhow. Well, look, I want to see Joe. I don't want to kid around with... With what? Well, I want to talk with Joe direct. You know, I thought for a minute maybe you were going to say you didn't want to kid around with small time. Buster wouldn't like that, would you, Buster? Buster ain't a guy that talks a lot. But he don't like it, I can tell just by looking at him. Well, now, look. There's no hard feelings or anything like that. Well, have a drink, huh? Go ahead. I'll have a shorty. Tom? The shorty. Buster? He ain't drinking. Well, all right. So, uh, so it's set then, huh? I move in in about three weeks. Pictures are all lined up. I think the place will be ready by then. It's, it's 100 a week, huh? 150. Hey, you said 100. That was before. Before what? There's a couple of things Joe was asking a couple of questions about, that's all. For instance, where are you from? Who are your buddies? How do we know you ain't phony? See, a guy cases a town. A guy lines up all the money he's got, all the loose cash. He, he goes step by step, finding just what he wants. Gets a good after hour set up. Gets his game room lined up. Gets his girls, the steerers, coming in smooth. He needs us to fix. And you guys put the squeeze on him. What do you think, Buster? All right, you're in. You got your fix. But 150 a week. Close. Too close. You're getting to the heart of it now. Because those three tight-faced, gimlet-eyed men, Party Boy and Lennox Avenue Tom and Buster, representing Joe Caddison, any one of them would have snuffed you out easier than snuffing out a cigarette. Did you know that this has gone beyond the newspaper stage? You like your wife, your home, your life, your job, too much. And anything else would be suicide. I've been expecting you for a long time, Mr. Schoenstein. It's the district attorney of New York County. A solid, substantial sort of a man. And you're doubly glad you came. Well, I don't know how much overlapping we've done, Mr. District Attorney. A good deal, I'm sure, but you go ahead anyway. Well, we have got the party boy set up pretty well in hand. And we know all about Marie. Marie? Yeah, Marie. Face to face with Marie. Entries and diaries, statements from girls themselves. Not too much overlapping. You've done a lot better than we have. And? And the landlord of the places through Lennox Avenue Tom's department. General go betweening party boy again. <laughs> He's a kid really gets around. Yeah. And Buster. The payoff, the fix, the protection. Oh, yeah, and numbers. But I never got to Joe. Big Joe. Well, we got to Big Joe. Oh. And from Big Joe, we got the inside on police craft and what is, in fact, an integral part of the whole crime setup. Well, then I think I've about played out my usefulness. I wouldn't say that at all. We can stage arrests easy, pick up this one and that one, but in the end, these lice have a saying. You can't change human nature. Hmm. Yeah, I've heard it. Meaning, close up one place, another will open right next door. Stop one, hop joint, another will spring up down the block. It's a tough thing to change. That's where you come in. Now, if you can make this stuff live, Get it so people will see it in terms of their own daughter, their own son. The price they have to pay for this thing that hangs over our city. Hey, I wrote an editorial. Run it. Run a series of them. Not just high and mighty talk, big words, but down-to-earth human translation of this stuff in terms of people, ordinary people. Would you do that? 
That's what I'm in business for. And then it began. Not since the days of Al Capone, the days of Lucky Luciano, have the facts been poured out. There are dens in this city where a man or woman can drink for 24 hours out of 24. Drink and gamble and anything else he wants. It is easier to get into most of the institutions of vice in New York City than it is to get into downtown's more exclusive restaurants. There are operators in this city who openly boast of being able to buy any policeman from Inspector Downs. And as the articles roll out, the public reacts and the DA moves. 104 more arrested in vice raids over the weekend. Total now, 293. Roundup includes leaders of greatest vice combine since Lucky Luciano went to jail. Arrest now total 300. Vice group smashed. You see them in the lineup in the DA's office. Party Boy and Duchess, who runs one of the dance palaces. Marie, Frank the Sheik, hop joint owners. Freddie the Dasher and Lennox Avenue Tom. Hotel keepers who rent rooms for parties. And finally, Buster and Big Joe Caddison. 300 men and women who have preyed on millions. 300 who have made a living out of the poverty and anxiety and the desires of ordinary people. 300 human vultures brought to the only rightful nest for this kind of bird of prey. The lockup, the jail, facing the justice. Now we read you that telegram from Paul Schoenstein of the New York Journal American. Of the 300 arrested in the vice cleanup, many were convicted and received lengthy sentences. Vice in New York received a severe setback, but as any honest reporter knows, it has by no means ended. But at least we touched the surface. We set a foundation for future investigations, future campaigns against the many thousands who still prey on New York's millions. In order to protect the names of people actually involved in tonight's authentic big story, the names of all characters in the dramatization were changed with the exception of the newspaper reporter. This is the United States Armed Forces Radio Service, the voice of information and education.